MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. Thanks to Joey Odessa for joining us on the program. Great to have him back in the rotation. Uh, just quickly, I mentioned uh, Tony Oka and Joseph Joyce, uh, super heavyweights, Olympic boxing. Uh, the Joyce dude, he's actually like the grandson of those bare knuckle guys from the movie. And it's a crazy ass movie with those dudes and you know, the families of the clans and they just fight and fight and fight and fight each other forever. They make the Hatfields and McCoys uh, look soft. Uh, let's uh, bring in uh, Lou from Gamblu.com as uh, the UFC takes a week off. Uh, the Olympics take center stage, uh, but UFC 202 around the corner, uh, Lou. The countdown is on. I was just talking about the line movement with Joey. Seems like in the last couple of days, there's been, uh, there's been some movement, money coming in on Nate Diaz right now. Fight's nearly a pick at some places right now, Lou. Yes, very exciting it is, and before I scratch the surface of that, I do want to make uh, take this time, since there's no card this week, to thank you as well as the, all the great professionals at the Fight Network for allowing me to come on and uh, profess my my uh, passion for the fight game. So uh, getting to 202, uh, I will say that I think that when some when when the when the uh, when many professionals in my industry say that the public looks down the barrel of a straw for their perspective, I think that the exact perfect analogy is the line on this fight. It's like Metallica chopping bre- chop your breakfast uh, on a mirror. Is that what you're going with this, uh, Lou? Uh, but no, it's, no, but I it's don't mean one, that reference. One one thing well, with this though is. Last time, the public really just bought into Connor. It was crazy. He opened up at minus 585 in some places. I looked at the numbers, Lou. He closed at minus 400. I cashed a ticket uh, with Diaz. But it's amazing how fickle the public are. That last time, oh, Connor's going to kill him. And now suddenly the fight's a pick him. Sound like Joey was leaning on Team Connor in the rematch here. What do you make of the number? Is it almost value with Connor because the number was so high last time? And I know you had another rematch that you wanted to use as a reference point. Yes, that's correct. I do, I do think that the public was completely misinformed on the first fight. And I think the public, even though it's the same two guys fighting, is completely misinformed in this fight. And I think they're like a, a, a hybrid uh, hunting dog. They're chasing a grouse and a quail runs in front of their nose and they chase the quail. In this particular instance, uh, I find tremendous alignment with the Duran and Sugar Ray rematch from maybe 20 or 25 years ago. A lot of your uh, viewers aren't going to remember that or the specifics, but that's why they have an old guy like me come on and bark with you. Well, I remember Uh, it, Lou. The first fight was in my hometown in Montreal, and since we're talking Olympic boxing, Sugar Ray Leonard actually won a gold medal in 1976 at the Olympic Games uh, in Montreal. I grew up with Sugar Ray Leonard. That's how big Montreal was as a fight town in those days. Think about that. Sugar Ray Leonard nor Duran, neither of them were Canadian. Uh, you know, why was the fight in Montreal? Because Montreal was that great of a fight city. Well, and, and Sugar Ray was the epitome of the sweet science, and Duran was the epitome of the up-from-the-streets, gritty, yep. Hispanic fighter. Duran was a fighter. He was in against a technician, and that's what happened with Diaz and Connor won. If you watch how Connor trains and his movement, that was the big rage. It's still the big rage. Connor hasn't dished it. The sweet science in the return, in this case Sugar Ray Leonard, was completely completely absorbed in focus and fighting for his legacy while Duran was hanging from chandeliers in downtown New York drinking uh, Cristal. Now, I'm not saying that Diaz is doing the same, but he is on TV programs. He's uh, doing skits for Jimmy Kimmel and the success that he's been working for for so long and that is due him is coming his way. Meanwhile, McGregor is working for his legacy, and if McGregor's going to be great, He's going to not only beat Diaz in this rematch, but he'll set up a trilogy. And there's more money in the trilogy. And you know what? Uh, As a reference point, uh, Lou, for the record, in the second fight, that's when the the famous No Mas uh, comes into play. It's amazing with the Duran movie coming uh, uh, coming out right now. The synergy is unbelievable on the program tonight, Lou. Looks like a hell of a movie, actually, uh, as well. Um, uh, the movie about uh, Duran, but in a second fight at the uh, the Superdome in New Orleans, that was the no moss. And 
I agree with you as well. And I'm thinking with Diaz too. He's the type of dude. He's going to make so much freaking money for this fight. First fight, he got paid well. This fight, he's going to make so much money. He's going to make more money uh, next Saturday night than two years ago we ever thought was possible. So I think that takes a little bit of the edge off as well. And even subconsciously thinking, I'm going to make a ton of money. And hey, there's a trilogy potential down the road here. Clearly, Connor is the hungrier fighter coming in uh, this time. I think there's hunger. I think there's focus. I think the whole thing for him missing 200 uh, only added time for him to prepare. There's no doubt in my mind that 110% of his being is being focused on Diaz on this next fight. And when I can get a guy's best effort, I can tell you, we've already told our clients move on this fight right now at, at minus 115. It, it, this is a stupid number. And if it goes to plus 105 or plus 110 we'll hit it again but this is a great great spot for mcgregor in my opinion um uh, we're kicking it with lou from gamblu.com right lou we've only got a minute or two left uh, here but uh, there's not numbers posted uh, for uh, for the prelims yet we got we got numbers for uh, for the co-main event anthony johnson and glover Teixeira. anthony johnson's minus 200 and i was thinking to myself it's not often you have glover Teixeira as an underdog and in fact He's only been an underdog once in his life, uh, Lou, and that was against uh, John Jones. Um, so uh, what, what's your take? Is that line too high? And the fight that's kind of flying under the radar, I'm not going to say it has any championship implications, uh, but nothing wrong with watching these two dudes scrap on a Saturday night. Cowboy Cerrone and, uh, and Rick Story. Cowboys are a 60 cent favorite right now. Yeah, both fights are, they look awesome to me. I, t I tend to agree that the line tightening up a little bit with, between Teixeira and Johnson. I think Teixeira is going to have to weather a furious first round, and if he can get it past that first round, I look I look at Teixeira as being live. Uh, Story and Cerrone's going to just be such a styles make fights uh, kind of an affair. I think Story has to get this thing down, get in close, and take uh, Donald's distance away, and it should be an awesome fight. Uh, Rick Story's found a second win, though, once again. I've always been a fan of his. You know, he was a badass. He sort of veered into journeyman uh, dumb, <laughs> and now, like, Oh, no, I'm back again. You know, we see this with these guys. You saw Cote, we just sh shot there. Cote went on that little run. Story's in a nice, nice little groove uh, once again. But we'll break down all these fights in detail. I just uh, wanted to do a little uh, little uh, advance uh, peak sneak ahead to UFC 202. We're one of the best in the business. Uh, Lou from Gamblu.com. Always a pleasure, Lou. We always appreciate the time with the Fight Network and you, Gabriel. Thank you so much. There's uh, Lou from Gamblu.com. Uh, uh, we take a quick break. We come back and we kick it old school, medieval video. It's good.